Hey, how you doing? This is Adam Post, publisher of more than a thousand comic books and marketing expert covering woke medical schools cancel illegal diversity programs after multiple lawsuits. Let's get into the story. Before we do, please be sure you are subscribed to the channel. Click the bell for notifications. Give me a thumbs up. I really appreciate you guys. From the College Fix, medical schools redo diversity programs after federal complaints. Also from the College Fix, Paramedic group scrubs no whites allowed scholarship after lawsuit. Federal investigation prompts medical school to open programs to white students. Medical schools push flawed race matching watchdog warns. Who is this watchdog group calling out these medical schools? Calling out these paramedic groups pushing scholarships that are illegal. A lot of it comes from do no harm. Do no harm represents physicians, nurses, medical students, patients, and policymakers focused on keeping identity politics out of medical education, research, and clinical practice. Literally, they're protecting your life and the life of everyone else in the country trying to keep the woke agenda away from human beings' actual lives. In short, Do No Harm protects healthcare from the disastrous consequences of identity politics. From the collegefix.com, medical schools redo diversity programs after federal complaints. Several medical schools scaled down diversity programs to comply with federal law following complaints from watchdog organization Do No Harm. Several medical schools across the nation have recently amended or scaled back diversity, equity, and inclusion programs and policies after they were flagged by Do No Harm, a medical advocacy group that seeks to push back against declining meritocratic standards and DEI encroachments in medical school curriculum. Can you think of anything more important than what these guys are doing? The Watchdog Organization has filed more than 140 complaints with the Department of Education's Office for Civil Rights within the last two years, and nearly 40 investigations have been opened so far, with 30 still active, according to a spokesperson. The complaints targeted universities that illegally discriminated based on race for scholarships, fellowships, awards, and academic programs in an effort to advance DEI initiatives. Do No Harm's latest victory came after the University of Colorado's Anschutz Medical Campus ended three diversity scholarships that restricted eligibility on the basis of race, sexual orientation, or gender identity, according to a December 5th announcement. Other complaints have led to updated programs that clarify no one will be excluded on the basis of race. For example, the group succeeded in getting a, quote, Black Naturopathic Opportunity Scholarship ended at the National University of Health Sciences. The Suburban Illinois University also, quote, removed all links and references to the scholarships promoting external third-party scholarships that discriminate based on race, ethnicity, color, and or sex or gender from the university's website, according to Do No Harm. The group highlighted other examples and comments to the college fix. For example, Duke University's Black Men in Medicine program expanded its scope welcoming black males and their allies. A group spokesperson said via email, how ridiculous is that? Black men in medicine, just you can be a man, go into medicine. It doesn't matter what your race or your gender or sexual preference is. Quote, this move ensures inclusivity for all faculty members and trainees, irrespective of their race or gender, who support the cause. The University of Kansas Medical Center also made adjustments to the eligibility criteria for two of their diversity scholarships. In this way, they are prioritizing inclusivity and promoting underrepresented groups without strictly defining them. Baylor College of Medicine removed four scholarships that were previously deemed discriminatory, according to the advocacy organization. All three have been changed as of October, according to letters provided to the fix. The programs were changed following complaints filed by Mark Perry, a fellow with Do No Harm, he's also on Twitter, you can follow him on there, who said such race-based discrimination in favor of certain racial groups, example, blacks, Hispanics, whatever, is clearly illegal and in violation of Title VI, which prohibits discrimination based on race, color, and national origin. Asked how common the problem is, he told the College Fix that almost every college and university in the country engages in some form of illegal discrimination. Perry has identified more than 2,000 potential violations of both Title VI and Title IX at more than 800 colleges and universities across the country. These violations include discriminating on the basis of race or sex. 
Laura Morgan, a program manager with Do No Harm, told The College Fix that the ubiquitous nature of DEI offices in U.S. colleges and universities leads to the discovery of many of the discriminatory programs we find. Most are created in the name of equity and in response to demands from activists, but they violate civil rights, she said. Paramedic group scrubs no whites allowed scholarship after lawsuit. The National Association of Emergency Medical Technicians scrubbed a scholarship only open to students of color following a federal lawsuit. Do No Harm, a group fighting, quote, diversity, equity, and inclusion in medicine, filed the lawsuit on January 10th. The diversity scholarships for emergency medical service techs will be awarded to students of color who do not hold an EMS certification, but who intend to become an EMS practitioner, according to an archived link. NAEMT's diversity scholarship was established to help support underrepresented groups in joining the EMS profession and to promote the development of greater diversity in the EMS workforce so that our workforce reflects the communities that we serve. The website originally stated, quote, NAEMT will award up to four scholarships of $1,250 that may be used for tuition, fees, and books. Do No Harm filed the lawsuit on behalf of at least one student and identified who would apply for the scholarship but is not allowed because she is white. This student satisfies all of the non-racial criteria for the scholarship according to the lawsuit. The suit requests a permanent injunction to stop the program as well as national damages of $1. The Healthcare Reform Group alleges the program violates the Civil Rights Act of 1866. The lawsuit also cited the Students for Fair Action Admissions versus Harvard Supreme Court case that banned affirmative action in higher education. The Emergency Medical Tech Group says it supports diversity and inclusion on its website. Quote, NAEMT believes that the EMS workforce should reflect the demographics of the communities in which it serves. National and state EMS associations have a responsibility to promote diversity and inclusion within the EMS profession, its website states. NAEMT actively collaborates with other national EMS organizations and EMS agency and education leaders to promote a diverse and inclusive EMS workforce and encourages individuals from underrepresented communities to attend EMS education programs. Do No Harm Chairman Stanley Goldfarb stated in a news release that the group, quote, is given the important responsibility of training America's first responders. Like all aspects of healthcare, training the best and brightest to provide the best care for patients should be the primary concern of all medical organizations, not the skin color of an EMT. Dr. Goldfarb, a former associate dean at the University of Pennsylvania's medical school, stated, quote, first responders and all medical professionals should be given opportunities, training, and scholarships on the basis of merit. The Healthcare Reform Group has been successful in fighting racial discrimination by universities as profiled by the College Fix. Just so you know who you're dealing with in this whole group, from the College Fix, university researchers claim magic mushrooms can help people heal from racial discrimination. So that's who these lawsuits are against, the kind of people that are going to tell you, you can heal your racial discrimination by taking magic mushrooms. And another success. Federal investigation prompts medical school to open programs to white students. The Medical University of South Carolina revised several programs and scholarships after the Department of Education opened an investigation. The Department of Education's Office for Civil Rights informed Mark Perry, a fellow with Do No Harm and a former University of Michigan Flint professor, of the update to his complaint letter. The investigation centered around possible violations of the 1964 Civil Rights Act which prohibits discrimination on the basis of race for higher education institutions that receive federal funding. The resolution comes after the medical school informed OCR in February that it would open its programs to all students regardless of race and change the language to reflect this. Quote, for each of these scholarships, the complainant was unable to provide nor was OCR otherwise able to find examples of students who were or are currently being excluded from these scholarships because of their race, the letter said. Quote, do no harm is pleased that the University of South Carolina School of Medicine chose to eliminate its discriminatory and unlawful scholarships. Laura Morgan with the Do No Harm told the Daily Caller News Foundation, this decision shows they are well aware that adopting racially discriminatory admissions practices under the guise of inclusivity is not only lowering standards in the name of diversity, but is a violation of federal law. 
Dr. Stanley Goldfarb, the leader of Do No Harm, previously told The Fix why diversity in medicine is a problem. Quote, those who argue for the importance of diversity in the medical workforce and in admission to medical school place the interest of students and practitioners, particularly minorities, above the interests of patients, he said. This is the latest example of a university revising its programs in the face of a federal investigation. For example, the University of Louisiana and Howard University amended an exclusionary business program in May 2022 after the Department of Education launched an investigation. Yum Brands, which owns Pizza Hut, Taco Bell, and KFC, operated a franchise owner training and business degree initiative with the two universities. Prior to the federal complaint, the Yum Franchise Accelerator MBA program advertised itself as open to, quote, underrepresented people of color and women. The company will also clarify that the fellowship is open to all backgrounds in its own marketing materials as reported by the College Fix. And here's what Do No Harm is really fighting against. Medical schools push flawed race matching, watchdog warns. Many medical schools are adopting a flawed theory called racial concordance to justify admitting students based on their race, a medical watchdog organization warned in a new report. Regardless of the Supreme Court's ban on affirmative action last June, many institutions of higher education, including medical schools, still appear to be seeking ways to keep race a part of their admissions process. One way that they may be trying to get around the ruling is the theory of racial concordance, which argues that pairing patients with doctors of the same race has a positive effect on health outcomes. The idea was erroneously cited by Supreme Court Justice Katanji Jackson's affirmative action dissent. Do no harm, a watchdog organization dedicated to keeping identity politics out of medical education, recently released a report refuting this argument Quote, racial concordance in medicine, the return of segregation. According to Do No Harm, most research does not support racial concordance. But while advocates point to a small number of studies, they are generally cherry-picked and decisively outweighed by the full body of scientific research on the topic, the report states. The concept actually can work against its stated goal and further divide patients and doctors of different races, according to the report. Quote, given the evidence, it is irresponsible for medical organizations and political actors to push in practice or policy for racial concordance in medicine. However, the concept still has support from a number of prominent medical organizations, including the Association of American Medical Colleges. In an amicus brief filed in Students for Fair Admissions versus Harvard, AAMC argued that black physicians are more likely to provide better treatments to black patients than physicians of different races. Can you even imagine that medical associations would say such a thing about any race of any patients? Completely outrageous. The association backed its claim by citing a study about infant mortalities that appeared in the journal Proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences. Quote, clinical penalties for black newborns treated by black physicians are halved compared with the penalties black newborns experience when cared for by white physicians, according to the study. Could you possibly insult doctors any more than this? I can't imagine how you could try to humiliate doctors any more than making a statement like that, that doctors look at the skin color of their patients and they degrade them and say, you know what, I'm gonna treat this patient differently. Absolutely horrendous. The association argued that the study shows, quote, having a black physician is tantamount to a miracle drug. It more than doubles the likelihood that the baby will live. However, when asked about the argument, Do No Harm told The Fix that there are mathematical issues with AAMC's assertion. Quote, the clinical penalty is halved, but that doesn't mean the survival rate doubles. The penalty goes from 0.4% death rate to a 0.3% death rate, but the survival rate doesn't double from 99.6% to 199.2% because it's obviously impossible. Do No Harm refuted AAMC's claim with a second argument in its report stating that even if the medical association had properly interpreted the study, there are still additional factors that need to be considered. Quote, if black newborns on average have more severe health issues, which other evidence strongly indicates is the case, and if babies with more serious medical problems are more likely to be assigned to a white doctor, the results of this study will be significantly biased. College Fix reached out to AAMC to ask if the organization planned to review Do No Harm's report. AAMC responded promptly, stating that they did not have anyone available to meet the communicated deadline. Responding, the Fix told the association that additional information could be added after the article was published, but no response was received. 
Other researchers have pointed out problems with racial concordance as well. Could it be any more obvious that the racial concordance argument is completely disingenuous? I don't know what more you'd need to see, but here's some more. Jay Green, a senior research fellow in the Heritage Foundation Center for Education Policy, also critiqued racial concordance proponents' representation of the infant mortality study in a June commentary. Quote, the study's comparison of death rates for newborns who have doctors of different races does not take into account the fact that black newborns have a greater likelihood of serious medical complications and the attending physicians assigned to treat those more challenging cases are likely to be white, Green wrote. The study itself states that black newborns have a higher overall mortality rate. Quote, black infants experience inferior health outcomes regardless of who is treating them according to the study. Despite these critiques, the theory of racial concordance is widely accepted among healthcare organizations, according to Do No Harm's report. The amicus brief supporting racial concordance was signed by 14 medical organizations, including the American Association of Colleges of Nursing, the American Association of Colleges of Pharmacy, the American Medical Association, the American Academy of Pediatrics, the American Medical School Association, the American Medical Student Association, and the Student National Medical Association. The College Fix contacted the American Association of Colleges of Nursing and asked if it planned to review Do No Harm's report. AACN replied that the report was outside its mission and scope, and therefore it did not plan to review it. Of course, it would sound like it would probably be important for them to review it because it does have credible commentary on the treatment of patients, particularly newborns, so why not? But no, they can't be bothered because it undermines their ridiculous narrative. Additionally, the College Fix reached out to the American Academy of Pediatrics and American Medical Student Association. No response was received. From CNN Health, when black patients see black doctors. So here's the argument they're making, that if you're black and you see a black doctor, somehow you're going to have a better health outcome. And also, somehow you could actually manage having race-matched doctors to patients. Like that would be practical and it would be a good way to try to organize the medical system. How ridiculous could this get? It can get pretty ridiculous. When black patients see black doctors, service to patients and patient trust are both among the cornerstones critical to the status of public health, according to researchers. One example of broken trust between physicians and black patients happened in the 1930s when the U.S. Public Health Service and the Tuskegee Institute launched an unethical study in which researchers let syphilis progress in black men without treating them for the disease. The study ended in 1972. So it went on from the 1930s to 1972, and you expect black patients to trust the government and doctors at all? Patients tend to lie to their doctors. It has nothing to do with their skin color. They just don't want to honestly talk about what's going on in their life. Racial concordance doesn't solve this. Having highly skilled medical professionals is what solves this. We cannot lower, change, alter, discriminate against medical standards when we're trying to train the people that are going to keep us alive in our old age and treat our parents and treat our children. We should not be doing this. I'm sure you agree with me, but maybe you don't. Let me know what you think of all this in the comments below. Always love to see your ideas. Please be sure you are subscribed to the channel. Click the bell for notifications. Give me a thumbs up and I'll see you again soon with another video. And if I don't see you, I will miss you.